Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I've got this really fun card to share with you. It's actually evolved from the double diamond card that I've done. Now I've done that in a six by six and I was looking back at my old tutorials and thought that would be nice to do in a five by seven. And then as I started doing it, I just started to cut things a bit differently. And this is what I've got. So when it folds flat, this is what it looks like. And yes, I've got the holographic card there because I just think the holographic card I love with everything, but with my own papers and collection, I just think it works really, really well. So I have used the papers from my Made to Surprise party pack and the embossing folder is my celebration, sorry, the confetti. And then I've used some balloons and the yay and stuff and I'll talk you through that in a moment. But look at the balloons with the glossy accents over the top. Doesn't that look cool? So the card will open up and then it can be displayed like so. So it stands up really nicely bring it up a bit closer there just so you can see all the different texture and layers and then on the back you have your space to be able to write your message so the whole thing will fold flat obviously I do have the dimension with the rosette so I would pop this into one of my five by seven box envelopes and I'll link them or you can just use it in one of like the bouncy envelopes and um, that would work fine but again if you're not adding all that dimension then it will fit into a standard five by seven envelope but I just think it's so much fun so yeah let me show you how to make this okay so I use that lovely turquoise color and that is the I want to say it's the Tonic Studio one. I'll link it if I can find it. Um, today's is going to be this pink one here. So I've done the balloons, I've done lots of stuff because it's pretty easy. Um, I'll just talk you through what I've done. The supplies I've used, I used the Woodware One Liners. It's a great stamp set. Again, I'll try and share if it's still available, but I just used the Happy Birthday to You there at the top. Then that's my confetti embossing folder. Really nice, especially against that mirrored cardstock or the holographic, you can just really see it does show up really well. And then the balloons, it's this one here, it's a first edition balloon dies, and I use the yay, I just cut off the, the bottoms there, just so it, it literally just says the yay in the middle of the rosette. So that's what I use for that. And that comes with these four balloons, you know, these three big balloons, so there's four all together. This one here is an old Dovecraft one, along with this little one here, but any balloons will work, but that, if you've got the Dovecraft one, that's the one that I've used there. And then my paper pad is this one. I love it. I've used it so much. It's just such a fun, happy cut um, paper pad. And I think because of all the colours it has, it goes with so many different card, you know, plain card colours. And um, this is the party paper pad. So again, I will link that one. Okay, so the card size you want here is nine by seven. Along the nine inch side, you want to score at one and a half, three, six, and seven and a half. Okay, so that's all the scoring with your scoreboard. Keep this, well, I'm gonna use a stylus, I'll use my metal one and a ruler. Okay, so what we wanna do next, when I open this up, we've got score lines from the top here down to the bottom, and then the top here down to the bottom, and again. So that's what we wanna work on next. So you've got your, I'll hold it up, you've got this large area here in the center, but you just wanna score from the top left across this one and a half score line down to this one here and then from this bottom left for example up to that one so you're doing the crosses just within the two kind of um, sections here and then the two sections here so I'm going to lay my ruler down I like to use the smaller end of my stylus lay the stylus down first on the corner there and then move the ruler until you get it lined up with this bottom score line so you're going across that one and a half one down to the three okay and then again I'm going to go from this side what I'll do is I'll pop a template on my blog with a picture of this because I know a lot of you do like the templates just so you can you know you're definitely sure on where you're scoring so again and I'll hold this one up for you okay so I hold that up and it catches the light. There we go. So you can see, oh, that's a good one. You can see all the score lines. So there's the one and a half and the three. I've just done my cross within the first two panels there. And then down here, you can see, so all of that middle section, that large bit is all empty. And then just go down and go across those other two. Okay, so that now is all of our scoring done. Now we want to do some um, folding. So what you want to do is just create valley folds, make sure you get nice points on the two diagonal score lines that you've just done. So both of those score lines I've just done are now valley folds. So again, like so. And then the one and a half 
will become mountain. But as you do it, you kind of like pop it like so. And again with that one, just kind of get it right down into the corner there. So you can see valley, valley, but mountain folds for these pieces here. Okay, and then these, this one here needs to become a mountain, so that then folds behind, like so, and then you can push all that down, and these kind of pop out, they look like a wing, it reminded me a bit of a spaceship, um, I haven't yet decided what I'm going to call it, obviously you would have seen already now, because it would go into the title, but as I'm doing it still, I'm not sure, but it did remind me of something out of Star Wars. Just make sure everything's burnished well. Okay, so now you can see it stays in its shape and then you can just open it up slightly and it will stand up really nicely. So now we just need to do some decoration on and our mats and layers. So I have already stuck down this one here. So that's going to go in the centre like so. And this one measures, so the holographic is two and three quarters by six and three quarters. And then you'll have two and a half by six and a half with the pattern paper and that's going to stick on there like so. Then I've got this piece which is going to go on the other side for you to be able to write on and that's two and three quarters by six and three quarters. Again if you want to do mats and layers you can but I'm just going to keep that plain white. And then those are going to be for the sides but we'll go through these little pieces. You can see there where I've embossed them and then I've got my white mat layer. Okay so you want four pieces that are one and a quarter by three I'm using the white and then you want four pieces for your layer which is one by two and five eighths okay these pieces for the sides are one and a quarter by six and a quarter and they're going to be these larger triangles here so first of all get my trimmer and I'm going to lay this out just so you can make sense of it all so I'm going to cut one of these from one corner, top corner, down to the bottom. So I'm doing top left down to bottom right. Okay. Like so. And now one of them will go down here. It's going to go with the white, which I'll do in a minute. And one will go up there. So you see now how that works. So then this next one, I will have to do, well, I could do the same again and then it'll go on that side. So I'm going to do top left to bottom right. So now that one can go over that side and then down here. So they were top left to bottom right. These ones are going to have to be top right to bottom left. That one can go there and that one can go there. So again, top right to bottom left. And then that one can go just there and that one can go there. And then with the white, it doesn't matter because it's plain and it's you know double sided it's the same I can just cut them all top left to bottom right and I can just flip them over so it's you know it really doesn't matter but that will now have one of those like so you can see there that one and then I can have that one there so I'm going to cut all of those but if you're again if you've got a pattern then you'll have to do two one way and two another way but I can just again flip all those over so they're going to go there Okay, and then, so that's all that ready, with these two pieces here, you just want to mark halfway, I'm just going to use my stylus to put a little indent in the mirrored card, so you want to do at one and three eighths, because that's halfway, so one and three eighths, and one and three eighths, and then you're just going to trim, again if it's plain like mine then it won't matter, you can have two the same because you can just flip them around, but if it's pattern or directional, You'll need to make sure you check in it all when you, you know, on the card for the piece for the areas that you want. Make sure you check in that it's all going to be in the right direction. But now that one is going to go in there, and then that one can go in there. So you've got these pieces all left over as well, which I didn't check actually. Would they become the same? Yes, they would. Ah, so there you go. If you want to use them as your mat layer, so they're going to be too big for me because I'm using the white anyway. But I didn't think about that, but you do have two, so you could use them to fill those spaces. So 
Um, I know lots of you watch the tutorials first, so there you go, that might save you some cardstock. I'm now going to go and get all of this stuck down. Okay, so that's everything stuck down. Also, you do have that panel, but I just decided I don't, personally, I don't think it's needed because you're never really going to see it. You know, when it's open and it's displayed, it's just not really, well, I guess, look, it's up to you. I haven't. <laughs> but if you do want to, then you can. And then by all, then I would imagine you're going to have, you know, another four corners so they would become matte layers. So it's up to you. There is a way, if you don't want to do that white, I think if I hadn't done the white, and I'd done holographic as the matte layer, then maybe I would have realised that and then done it that way. But I like the white and I wanted the embossed layer to be in the holographic, which I think looks really nice with the um, confetti there. But anyway, that's all done. So now it's just to finish off. So the rosette is just a piece of one inch by 12. You can have it slightly shorter, 11, you know, or A4 length. And then I just scored it every quarter of an inch, concertina fold, and then just stick it together. I always use hot glue. I just use the circle punches there but I'm going to pop that one same I'm literally just going to copy that I love it I think uh, the balloon positioning everything so all the balloons I've already gone and done I've put a little bit of hot glue and some of this lovely string here it's gold which obviously I would have I guess preferred silver but actually gold and silver does look great mixed together and I think just because there's so much shine and you know sparkle with this card I think it looks really nice it's just so tactile it's, it's great so I'm now going to position all this down I am using my hot glue gun there so that's warming up nicely and um, yeah I'm going to pop it on high speed get this all stuck down and then I'll finish it off with the glossy accents Okay, so I've stuck all that down. So you can, I've got my sentiment here and I've popped it onto lots of foam so it's quite dimensional because I want to kind of bring all these together. I'm just going to pop this flat just so it's a bit easier. Pull them nice and taut and then you'll see where I've put my foam, I've put just one, I've left this gap basically where my finger is so that can go over this piece here. So what I want to do is decide where I want it. So it's going to go there and then with my hot glue, I'm just going to just lay a little bead of glue just over all of them and just hold that there and then with my other hand I'm just going to take the backing off of this very carefully make sure that's straight which it is it's still dry so I'm not going to move it away yet I want to keep it oh, nice and taut still while that glue dries so and then I can just trim off the ends oh, those are a little bit longer should have gone a bit higher but it, it, it still looks great I still love it you can see now there it all falls flat so then the glossy accent so those of you that have never seen this before this is the glossy accents it's an adhesive but um, lots of people use it to create shine on their cards so you will often see me use it um, just to add a little bit extra and also on lots of the underwater cards it's great if you want to create like bubble effect um, I always keep a pin in mind just because it does kind of clog up sometimes and the trick with this is when you lay it down keep it down if you keep lifting it up you're going to create air bubbles in it and if you do get any air bubbles if you lightly blast it with your heat tool it will get rid of them but now I'm just going to get it going if it comes out cloudy in areas don't worry it's just where it's thicker it will all dry clear and you don't always have to squeeze it just kind of move it around but I'm keeping the nozzle within the liquid so as not to get air caught up in there and I'm just going to move it around self leveling as well so it will kind of find its place move that all around once you've got a load down there I'm not squeezing it anymore so there's no air coming out so I can just move it around but you can see I've covered that whole balloon now you need to keep it nice and straight or flat because it will you know kind of drop but I'm now going to just do all the rest. You could do them before you pop them down if you want, but I find it easier to do these things when they're all in place. Okay, so that is the card finished. I'll just pop my pin back in there, and then I'll just bring that one up. So you can see, there we go. So it's still levelling out a little bit. Probably join it up there, actually. You can always just come in. It needs to be joined. There we go. Sometimes when you hit it in the light, and there we go, it's starting to smooth out a bit more. But I just love, I love the finish, especially on balloons. I think it looks really, really good. So that is the finished card. So you can see just how fun that is. I love all the colour. Careful not to touch it there, but it all folds flat. Like I said, it would fit in my box envelope, so they would have popped up along the tutorial. I'll link them at the end as well. 
Um, but I think it's lots and lots of fun. So that's the pink, and then there is the turquoise. So thank you for watching, as always, I always say it, but everything will be linked below. Please um, check out these tutorials that come up here as well. I'll, if I remember, I'll put the double diamond so you can see the other version because that's in 6x6. Six six. Also, there'll be a picture of my face somewhere here. If you haven't subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you did. If you enjoyed today's tutorial, you'll get to see lots more, plus my huge catalogue of tutorials that I've already got on there. Um, if you hit the notification bell as well, you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. So thank you for watching, and I'll be back again very soon. Bye.